Parsons in there. He scores. Randall moves it ahead. Chris Crossing takes it back. Scores. Oh, baby, what a shot. Buried it. Both Dinamo Riga and Davos turned out the lights on their opponents in the semifinal, so it's only fitting that the two undefeated teams now meet for the title. So let's send off 2011 in style. The Spengler Cup final is next. Boy, they're getting it all this weekend in Davos, Switzerland, up in the Alps. The highest city in Europe. Snow yesterday, it's warming up a little bit. They're getting sleet. And yes, the two best all week long, Dinamo Riga from Latvia, the host Davos will meet now in the Spengler Cup final. As on this New Year's Eve morning, we say hello Canada and welcome to our final day coverage of the uh, Spengler Cup. We started with the six teams of which one was Team Canada, coached by Mark Crawford, but they went out in the quarterfinals. And now we're down to the final two and it is Dinamo Riga from Latvia as teams from the KHL try to win their fourth straight Spengler Cup while Davos tries to end a streak their last coming oh, back about five years ago. And with a preview, let's say hello to Paul Romana and Doug Hunter. So Canada isn't the only team that has a hard time winning the Spengler Cup. Last time Canada won it was in 2007. The last time DeVos won it was in 2006. And they throw everything they have at it. This is almost as prestigious a title as the league title. And still, it's tough to win. Well, absolutely, Paul. You're, you're right. I, generally speaking, the teams, obviously, the, the, the ambition is to win the league title. But for Davos, he said they haven't won since 2006. This is a year they want to retake the Spengler Cup. They added four very important players on the eve of this tournament to bolster their roster. And hence, they've managed to get themselves into the final today with a really good opportunity, I think, against a decent but not great team from Riga Latvia. Okay, I'm going to get you to expand on that. Decent but not great team. Yeah. Do they have more to show us? I think they do. I mean, we've seen a number of different teams from the KHL here that I thought were more explosive, more dynamic. I, I, I sort of asked myself this morning, going over some film and some notes about, does this team have something left in the tank? And I'm not certain about that. I don't think they match up well against Davos' speed. I don't think they still sort of have the same burst. They're not as dynamic. And it wouldn't surprise me at all to see Davos reclaim the title today. All right. Does not surprise me at all that there's another KHL-based team in the final. Last five years, a Russian or KHL team has been in the final every one of those years. You want to know who the hockey power in Europe is. And fellas, uh, Davos are the defending Swiss League champions. They've won five of the last 10, 30 Swiss titles since 1926. Looking for a Spengler Cup today. And a very good morning to you. It's breakfast at the Spengler Cup as we get set for the face-off of this 2011 championship game. Arno Del Curto uh, looking relaxed and confident as he should be. His team has played very well in this tournament and they will face the Latvian team from the KHL, Dinamo Riga, going for their first ever Spengler Cup title. We see a new goaltender, Marus Juicers will get the start. Latvian goaltender Paul, a guy with potential to be a national team goaltender for Latvia. A bit of a surprise given the fact that they do have Chris Holt. He's played very well for them in the tournament. I thought they were going to come back with Holt today, but the head coach Pekka Rautikelio wanted to split it 2-2, four games in the tournament for Dino Riga, and wanted to give both goaltenders equal opportunity to play. The place is sold out. The Schnee <laughs> snow is uh, billowing down outside the rink as we were on our way in. A great wintry atmosphere here on New Year's Eve day. And thanks for getting up early to join us. Losenius, one of the stronger players for them. He play a wing or center. He's a, a rare import on this Riga team. He's Finnish, as is the head coach, Pekka Rotskello. Exactly. Likes to, likes to round out his team. He's got an American goaltender. He's got a Finnish import. Primarily Latvian born and bred players representing the majority of this Riga Latvia team. Reto Berra will get the start for DeVos. And now this layout here, you listen to the fans echo the announcement. They finish the guy's name. Great veteran check with this team. Oh, 
They love this guy. The Von Arks brothers, Reto Van Arks, Jan Von Arks, legends here in Davos. Reto in his 16th season with the team, as long as that man has been here, Arno Del Curto. He is looking for his fifth Spengler Cup championship. It would be the 15th in club history. And there's Pekka Rautekelio, a former National Hockey League defenseman with both Boston and the Calgary Flames. This is an outstanding coaching career in Europe, won championships in both in Finland and Switzerland, and now coaching Dinamo Riga in Latvia. Robbie Earl, what a job he has done. Had a great game against Canada. The way he has controlled the puck. The referees for this game are Jean Bear and Jorg Yablukov. And I believe they have microphones on either the referees or the linesmen. Championship game underway, and I know if you're a Canadian fan, you wish they were here, but enjoy this one. It'll be an entertaining contest. Puck clear back towards the corner. Christianis Redlish back after it. Tries to send it up along the boards. Kept in, not kept in at the line. And one thing to keep in mind, Doug, we were talking about it earlier. Hey, Riga just played last night. That's a quick turnaround. Absolutely. You know, they finished about 10 o'clock last night. By the time you eat and finally get to bed, it's about 2 o'clock in the morning. And here they are. That's about a 10-hour turnaround. Get to the rink about two hours ahead, 10 o'clock in the morning. Eight hours, Paul, more or less. From the time you go to bed, the time you get up, eat, and get to the rink. That's Very what, difficult. Very difficult one indeed for Riga that, today. That was the situation Canada was in last year, you remember. They played the night game before the noon championship game. They still fared pretty well. They lost 4-3 to St. Petersburg, but... I think the legs were pretty heavy by the third period. They were, and I look for Riga right now. They're going to play a very defensive game. I don't look, they're not going to chase. They're going to conserve their energy and hope to do very well in the power play. But five on five, look for them to be extremely defensive, particularly to start the game. And that's a great point because what DeVos can do is they can lure you into playing that chase game, running around, and just wear you out. We saw them do that against Wolfsburg. Puck played up ahead. Long shot comes in. Fired across towards the front. That was tapped away. Yeah, sorry, that wasn't Wolfsburg. Wolfsburg played Dynamo. Little fake shot stepping up in over the blue line. That was uh, Vitkevici who they had running around. Sorry, short night for yours truly as well. Puck tapped up in the wing. And right back in comes Cironi. Looking towards the net. Scores! Gregory Cironi. One minute and 40 seconds in. A weak goal right here on his users. Deflected. It did go off the stick of Rekis, the defenseman. Chironi cutting in as a lefty into the right-hand side. You'll see it looking to come to his forehand, but just a weak shot deflected. And if you're a juicers right here, you have to have that puck. You've got to be out further, play big right here, but you cannot allow that flopping puck, almost like a knuckleball, to beat you underneath the glove. You've got to come out and be tall and make a save early on in the game right now because, as I mentioned early on, Dina Mariga doesn't have the energy. They don't want to chase the game, and now they find themselves having to do that, falling behind 1-0 after only a minute and 40 seconds here in the first. Cironi was coming in, and then he had Senya going for the front of the net. And one minute and 40 seconds in, DeVos grabbed the lead. Stalls up after it for Dinamo Riga, trying to dig it out of the corner. 
And we're going to have a penalty coming up, a holding call. It's going to be Rene back going off. Yeah, back guilty of the holding in the corner. A little bit of a, if we do see the highlight, a little bit of circula circulation of the puck down low. Riga, pretty good team doing that. Obviously, a bit bigger physically than is Davos, circling the puck down low and back holding his opponent. You can see it right here, taking a grab. Number 23, Bichevsky's in the corner, right in front of the referee. So, relatively easy call to make. Galvin's trying to move it up. Comes all the way across. Galvin's and Chrysanis Redlish back at the blue line. That's their number one power play point unit. Tadichuk there looking for it. Huckless Red Redlish, number 19, will pick it up. Feeds it back out and just a little bit too far for his brother Chrysanis to get a stick on it. Now Galvin skating back. I think this is going to be a challenge for Riga right here. They're not used to playing a team that pressures so much on the penalty kill the way Davos does. Galvin oh. plays it ahead in over the blue line. Redlish cuts across the top of the slot, still with it. Weighing his options, still shovels it up and around. Galvin's back at the blue line. They can't get it to him. Comes back out, fired by Redlish. That was knocked down. That was Chrysanis Redlish with the shot, but it was blocked and cleared out. 108 to go in the power play. Dinamo Riga down one nothing, but on the man advantage here. Galvin's zips it down to the corner. Puck centered there at the side of the net. Carsons tipped it just wide. He had a pair of goals last night. He's wide open on the left side. There's a shot. It's grabbed and held by Barra. And I don't know, Carsons would have had a good look over on the left wing. See the puck coming right here. Nice shot here again. Coming off the stick of Redlish in here. Redlish in front of the net, number 19. This is going to be effective play for Dinamo right here. One of the ways to suck the box out is to drive men down low in front of Barra, making things difficult for him. He's going to try to, try to space things out. That's going to be a very important part of the... Dinamo Riga power play this afternoon. 48 seconds to go on the power play. Ozilinch kept it in, but only for a moment. Senya picks it up, and he'll play it down the ice. The great veteran Sandis Ozilinch back to pick it up. 39 years of age, 875 NHL games. He's back in his home country to finish off his career. It's his third season with Dinamo Riga. Zivulskis moves it up along the boards. This is Lundmark. Jamie Lundmark got it down low. Puck comes back out for Sibulskis. Wasn't able to keep it in. Lundmark scored the empty net goal last night to clinch things for Dinamo Riga in their semifinal game. He's up there now on the forecheck. Couldn't get to the puck. Dying seconds of the power play. Sibulskis plays it up. And the penalized player back on. Excellent job there by Forster, number 29 for DeVos. Bumping Lundmark off the puck behind that and clearing the zone. Davos is so fast, and I think teams, when they face him for the first time, ball, they're shocked at how much they pressure on the penalty kill. Almost looks like they're chasing the puck and they're undisciplined. But actually, that is their system. Pressure all over. I know speaking to Paco Rado Kelly, he knows Del Corto, coached against him in the Swiss League. So he was trying to convey that to his team. You've got to do things quicker. We saw in the first power play. I feel it was not effective in that in regard. Puck just rolls past Senya. 1-0 DeVos leading. A goal one minute and 40 seconds in. Puck comes across. Barra follows it. The goal was scored by Gregory Cironi. And that's it. That is, I think, is going to be the key for them offensively. They've got good forward to see. In this case, Uptis, Gervasis, other guys coming in. You've got to drive the net on Davos because you cannot allow them to get so comfortable that they can sit back and just basically bend. You've got to put pressure on them. And I think that's the only way that... <laughs> Excuse me, Dinamo Riga is going to make anything happen offensively, five against five. Coming down the wing and moving up there is Burglar. Good chance there. Burglar now after a down back of the net. Looking out in front, he's got Sieber there. Burglar took the scenic route around, tried to dump it on goal. That was Stahls who got in front of it. And Riga will regroup. Puck just played down the ice, and that will be an icing call after Redlish was looking for somebody to sprint up the middle and pick up that pass. And that, that's not a smart play by Redlish, Redlish right there. You've got enough time. Hold on to it. And you see right here, Burglar trying to throw it across. Good man marking right there by number 44. Sapalkis taking his man off the post, making sure stick was in the air. Excellent defense for, for Riga. And this is what's going to be important for them. When they come back, they have to adjust quickly to this very fast Davos attack. Skate, 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 skate. Come on. Watch on your skates, okay? Buck towards the corner now. Tadicek just flipped it around. 
Sakura over there after it. Peter Sakura, Tadacek coming over to help him out. Monarchs. Tadacek works it out. Sakura, big chance. Snap that one. Came close. Ankepans. Deep in his own zone. Three players behind the goal line. Uh, they were waiting for a change. Or a team photo. Long pass ahead there by Carsons. In over the blue line. Michaelis Redlish had a roll away from him. Big shot there from the blue line from Galvin's sizzled wide of the target. Moved up ahead by Kugisberg. Christianis Redlish playing it in. Long cross ice pass. Wheeling up there now. With the big circle and wrap around. Getting it out in front was Robbie Earl. And an icing call on Dinamo Riga. Earl is such an exciting player. And another example of it there. Welcome back. Dinamo Riga in the dark jerseys. And DeVos in the yellow jerseys. 1-0, 2011 Spengler Cup Championship game. Redlish coming in. Puck punched in on goal. Barra the save. Loose puck cleared to the boards. Michaelis Redlish with it. Number 19 here for Riga. Sends it up along the boards. Delayed penalty coming up against DeVos. And it will be the second power play chance of the game for Riga. The defenseman Tim Ramholt going off right here. You see the stick getting caught right, right in the skates on number 19. Redlish again. You've got to be smart right there. Pull your stick back, let him go up, then angle back, and then go back to your position. But if you're Ramholt there for Davos, the last thing you want to do is get your stick caught between the skates. So Ramholt is off. Now, I don't know if you've got a problem with the clock or is it? It's like a problem with the skates ball. He's putting a skate up on the board probably to get a. Uh, could have lost an edge. It looks like he's bringing his phone to the skates. So most likely lost an edge. <laughs> So, Mike, on the lines with it, you can hear. So, they'll give him a bit of time to uh, clean this up and okay. all fix. So, Barra back in. A little bit of extra rest for the penalty killers. Hey, guys, offense. Come on, don't flash it. Oh, don't flash it. I don't drop it. Oh. Buck comes back. Sibulskis ricochets it up around the boards. Burglar after it. Not able to get it out now. Sipoulis working in the corner. Ozelinch out there back at the blue line with Sibulskis. Ozelinch takes the puck here. All the way across for Sibulskis. Back to the top of the point. Lundmark not able to get it through. He's in the high slot. And drifts down lower on the weak side if they can get it over to him. Trying to push it back in the net there for Lundmark. He was run over and the puck hopped by him. And the loose puck cleared down the ice. 1.20 to go on the power play. Dinamo's doing nothing, nothing in the zone. They're not controlling the puck and they're not controlling the puck because they're not getting it. Ozelinch hits the line. Trying to guide his way through there. Up with Lucienus. Back towards the blue line and broken up there. We see DeVos, they really challenge on their own blue line in the penalty kill situation. Very aggressive. Redlish coming in. Shooting! Oh, picked off! Big stop! The glove flashes up from Barra and takes away the corner. I just finished talking about how they do such a good job picking pucks off. Monarchs had the puck, then fan on it right here. Redlich coming in. Nice job. Look at him look off right here. Look, and then the hard snapshot. But look at the quick glove right here by Barra. I like it. Out on the lip of the crease right there. Take as much angle away as you can. Big bolt in it. An equally fan, fine save, excuse me, by Barra in the Davos net. Just under a minute to go on the power play. For Dinamo Riga, they trail one to nothing. Down low, they're really struggling. Riga are on the power play. Down low, Paul, they're having a difficult time winning those loose pucks from the Davos defenseman. 
Galvins. Very deliberately up along the boards, looking towards the front of the net. Lucienis was in the high slot, but that play just falls apart. This is Lucienis trying to drop it off, and too many men. I believe that's going to be against Dinamo Riga. Bit of a messy change, and that will do it for their power play. You're absolutely right. What I'm sensing right now is they're fatigued. They're mentally fatigued. I think their legs are tired. There's no question about it. You can see they don't have the same jump as Davos. And these mistakes, too many men, for example, that's just a mental mistake. And I'm sensing a sort of an overall fatigue on this hockey team. Burkhardt uh, draws the short straw, goes over to serve the too many men in the ice penalty. And Arno Del Curto's team will go on the power play in 10 seconds, looking to add to their 1-0 okay, yes. lead. If you're a little late getting up, I can tell you that Gregory Ciarone scored one minute and 40 seconds in to give DeVos the lead. Oh, here's a chance here. Loose puck knocked down, racing down the ice is Sepulkas. And did quite have control or enough space. I'm looking at the face off right here. I like these shots. We've, we see more of these over here than we, for example, do in North America. Those close up shots of skates or face offs. And we see all the action that's involved in, in these different uh, types of sequences. They use uh, 25 cameras, I believe, is the number that Swiss television uses okay. to cover this tournament. Lift the goal from the ice, don't move. DeVos now on the power play. Senya up towards the corner. Senya up there with Gugisberg, number 94. He couldn't pick it up. Thrown back up towards Gugisberg, but intercepted. Fired to the line, but not out. Played down low. This is Senya. Gugisberg is in front. Just working it back and forth. Senya. Drops it down low and goes to the front of the net. Now back to the blue line. Puck punched in there. That stop. Senya's in front on his knees and wasn't quite able to get to it. Grossman moving up in the right side to keep it in, but it's tapped by him. Good setup by Davos. Getting the puck back to Brendan on the blue line. A hard slap shot, but it actually hit his own man Senya in front of the net. Just under a minute to go on the power play. Long stretch pass up the middle there. Tadichuk was lurking in the long grass under the neutral zone, but couldn't quite get his stick on it. And he definitely had a hole right there. He saw Forcer waiting for him to get to the hole, but the pass just wasn't there. Jamie Lundmark, a little windshield work. I know that. I was behind him. Canadian expat. Lundmark playing in two World Junior Championships for Canada. Also played in Italy, Russia, Sweden. A lot of stamps on that passport. Forster. Puck cleared in. Swung in by Von Arks. And he waits for it to come back, and it does. Von Arks. Nice little move there, trying to slip away from Redlish. Here's Forrester. Bats that puck down. Linesman waves off the high stick. Forster, not much room, just slides it back up. Here's Von Arks looking. Down low to that sharp angle, trying to draw someone down. Scores! Sakura! Peter Sakura, power play goal, 2-0 to Davos. You know, Paul, we talked about in the opening how important specialty teams were going to be, and you could not draw this up better or execute it better than Davos did right there. Win the puck down low, pass back to Forster, across the score. It's got an absolute hammer. This is the second time we've seen a blow one by a goaltender on the glove side. Did it against Canada in their game, and now here just blasting it by the in the Dinamo Riga net, but just a lovely executed power play resulting in this goal for Davos. And, you know, this is exactly what Riga did not want to find them in, having to chase the game. You can see their energy levels down, Paul. Now they're going to have to open things up, and that makes them even that much more uh, weak and vulnerable against this high-powered Davos attack. Sakura with his fifth goal of the tournament. Right. That is tops on the team. And we 
talked about it earlier on, but I think one of the things that really hurt Canada, and I don't know how you find a way around it, a power play and penalty killing. And that takes hours of practice and familiarity, and you can see it benefiting DeVos. Their special teams have been the best in the tournament of any team, and here they are in the final and up 2-0. Up towards the goal, Sieber. Sieber working it along the wall. And the puck just steered in deep there by Michaelis Redlish. Grossman is flipping it down in deep. Ozilin's back looking for it with his teammate Maya. Maya fell down, but the puck moved up. Lundmark waiting for some support to come up, and he's just tied up. He had Grossman locking horns with him. Cerrone trying to drop that shoulder and drive to the outside, but Redlish had a hold of him. And uh, the uh, hooting is Ozilinch back behind the play, getting involved with one of the DeVos players, and they continue the conversation as they head towards the bench. That looked like Cerrone getting locked up there with the veteran. Well, you'll see, you know, Hoslin brought the stick pretty high up on Cerrone, but he's been looking for it. He's not afraid to dish it out. Teams are trying to get a sense of what kind of a player he is. He's not, he's not reluctant to run, guys. He tried to give Hoslin a shot earlier on in the period. I think that was a little bit of a payback right there. Rekis, number six over there after for Riga, can't catch up. Long pass. That was a streaking Peter Sikora coming down the right side, but doesn't click. And the faceoff will go back into the DeVos half of the ice, just outside the blue line. I think we're going to see a lot more guys streaking up. Davos is playing with so much confidence right now. I think they're just going to unleash this potent attack against Dino Moriga. And Drassus going after it, knocked away from him. Picking his way right up there, almost getting through was Robbie Earl. Great hands. Back the other way, swinging up. Puck fired towards the goal by Potzins, but covered up. You know, Potzins coming in with some speed right there, but Davos is in position. They're playing, they play man defense very, very well. Always back in numbers. Two against two, three against three. Rarely do we ever see them out man, and I don't think you're going to see this today because they get back into defensive position very quickly, and I don't like the speed in which Riga's transitioning the puck from defense to offense either. Anderson fires it through. It's loose there at the side. They jam away at it. It's still loose. Comes out, chopped towards the goal. Stahls was looking for it. Bit of pressure here now. A bit of hop from Riga. Stahls. Number 23 down low in the corner, coming back along the boards. He's battling away there with Rizzi. Anderson pushes it towards the net, and it'll just be grabbed and held by Barra. You know, it looks like there's some, some, some pressure being put here by Riga, but there, it's not. Look at Rizzi. He's right in position, blocking the cage right here. So all that Barra has to do is maintain that post ball with this. And you'll see he does it perfectly. Look at that. The big pad is right on the ice. Doesn't allow the puck to go through. Look at Rizzi just pinning it up against the net with his skates. It's a good job of Davos down low defense. Galvins fires it up. That's knocked down. Burglar. Lucienus plays it up, knocked down, tiptoeing in over the blue line, Steinman swings wide and then drops it behind, maybe a little too cute, Galvin's there to pick it up and starts back, works it up ahead, Redlish driving up towards the corner, good strong puck carrier, Redlish doing some work here, twisting and turning, Forrester trying to get a lasso around and Redlish all the way around in front, hooked it through the crease, great effort there, now onto the stick of Lucienus. And he had it pulled away there. Tadacek said, enough is enough. And he's got control now. Puck played up ahead. A little bit of room opening up. Backhand shot from Von Arx. Off the shoulder and out of play. But again, another example of that very quick Davos transition. Well, and they caught him on, you'll see, and they caught him on a bad shift, too. Von Arx coming in, sliding to his back, and he's being pressure right there by Lundmark. Good job of Jamie Lundmark here. Forcing Von Arx to his side, but look at that. It's not a hard, that is not an easy back. If you're coming in with speed, you shift it to your back end, and 
bucket right off the face mask of the Riga goaltender users. Puck comes back, trying to stroke it on goal there. It was Sikora knocked away. Back quickly the other direction. Maya gets it in front. Oh, cutting across, hitting the side of the net there was Sipoulos, and he lost his stick. Trying to get back the stick and the puck, but glorious chance there for Martins Sipoulos. And he's parked just in front of the net. Wants some more. Maya after it. Maya gets it out there. This is Lundmark along the wall. And lost his balance and the puck. And the puck chopped up there. Trying to work in was Sikora. Both teams hustling in changes here on the fly. Gugisberg. On the move, Gugisberg gains the blue line, looking over his shoulder. He's got Brendel with him going to the front of the net. Earl is down there as well. They swing it all the way around. Earl parked just off the edge of the crease. Now he's going to scurry after that puck. Earl gets it to Brendel, trying to center it in front. He had Gugisberg right out at the top of the crease. DeVos keeping the pressure on here. Puck fired down low. Brendel shoots, and that is stopped. Pardon me, that was Gugisberg. Turned out of the corner and got a good shot away. It really is a tale of two teams right now. Look at, you know, just an offensive team like Davos. First, this nice save right here by Barra. You get the stick and the skate out, the pad, forcing, you'll see it right here, forcing Sapoulos far on the left-hand side right here, but just a nice job. This is an example of a goaltender using his size, shifting well laterally, but it's a big goaltender. Just doesn't give any net whatsoever to Sapoulos. Uh, Sapoulos shaking his head there. He's a real veteran of the international wars. Seven world championships, a couple of Olympic games, played in some big ones. Stalls gets it up towards the corner. Bukart's after it. Twisting away there, trying to shake off Rene back. Now back steals it there for DeVos. Puck knocked out towards the front of the goal. Moving in there was Lucienus. And Cioroni taps it outside the blue line. And just feathered ever so gingerly off the boards. Buys enough time so that DeVos can get in a change. Anderson's plays it across. Redlish coming down the middle. He'll take the pass off his skate. It's knocked down and back quickly the other way. Hanging back there is Burglar. However, Steinman couldn't get it to him. He was out muscled there in the corner. Carsons sends it rink wide, and then he'll carry in. Redlish with it. Tried to tuck it through for Galvins, who was breaking towards the goal. Redlish works it back. Galvins fires one in. That was knocked aside. Vera right down there, though. Nice and square. Pads in the ice. Delayed penalty coming up. It is against DeVos. Wrist shot comes in from long range. Redlish got it in, and Vera just grabs it and holds on. Yannick Steinman is in the penalty box for the hold. And it is Dinamo Riga with their third power play of the period. Obviously 0 for 2 on their first two power plays. And you can't underestimate the importance of the power play. Twisting in is Ozilich. The crafty veteran all the way up back of the net. Beat Forrester pushes him off the play. Now back up for Ozilich. Ozilich still. Great job protecting that puck. But now... Forrester trying to win it back. May is up there. And <laughs> Forrester <laughs> sprawled on the ice, finally gives up the ghost. The puck comes in front, and there's nobody there. No, that's that's not a smart play there whatsoever. You have the puck down low, a blind pass in the new, right in front of the goaltender. Too easy for Von Arx to just intercept that attempted pass and then get it down the ice for Davos. The pass like thing that took place. <laughs> Moving up after it. Lundmark couldn't get there. Puck comes to the side, and Barra's down. It is still loose. Referee right there. Penalty shot coming up. One of the DeVos players covered it up in the crease. And the referee decisively signaling penalty shot. And you'll see it right here. Puck's floating around. You're going to see Grossman, number 91, right here, pushing. And as soon as the puck goes down, you look at him grab it with his hand. Yeah. I and mean, the referee is standing right there, sees it with no question whatsoever. 
great job by the referee, though. He had positioning right over top, just watching like a hawk. It was Jean Hebert, it was just right against the back of the net, so when Grossman grabbed it, it was an easy one for Hebert to make. <laughs> yeah, I don't quite know what he was thinking there. The Steinman not too happy with the uh, camera in the penalty box. But what an opportunity here for him. This, is, this could be a gift for Dean Morigo right now. Penalty shot. Mike this Redlich, one of their best, most crafty offensive forwards, set to take it. Get them right back into the game. Here he comes, Redless. No! Barra stays with him and shuts the door. That is exactly what I was thinking, how I thought he should play that penalty shot. Bad ice right now. Don't forget, they don't clean it. Bad ice. You want to force him into handling the puck. Don't allow him to shoot. And I was thinking to myself, big goaltender like Barra should come out and challenge him, and that is exactly what he did. Look at when he came over. Redless had nothing. Absolutely nothing. Read it all the way. Came out far. And look at this, Paul. Nothing at all except... The whites of his pillows, nothing. So what's that? The unofficial count, three penalty shots in the last four periods we've watched. Yeah. No one scored. No one scored. The goaltenders have been fantastic, and I think one of the key elements of all of them, they've been big goaltenders. They're playing their angles, and they're playing their position very, very well. Got a couple of tweets from people. Uh, if you want to follow along, it's hashtag Spengler Cup, hashtag TSN. My Twitter handle is Paul underscore Romanuk. People asking whether or not we thought Barra had what it takes to play in the NHL. He's a good young goalie. What do you think? Well, he's going to be likely a backup on the Swiss team in the World Championships, depending on the status of Jonas Hiller and what happens with Anaheim. Well, he's a big goaltender. He just looks like a prototypical NHL goalie. He's improved considerably over the last two years. Much better with his feet. Handles the puck pretty well, and you can see he's, he certainly knows how to use his size in the net. Lundmark trying to throw it across there in front. 12 seconds left in the power play for Dina Moriga. Galvins. Knocked down there by number 87, Burglar. He comes in, penalized player back on. That eye high shot rises right over top of the net. Minute 19 to go in the first period. We will be speaking with Latvian veteran Sandis Ozalinch during our first intermission. Here comes Burglar. Tries to get it out in front. Off the side of the net. Pinged off the post. Sotniks moves it out. Bukarts playing it up around back of the goal. Stalls looking for it. It rolls by him. And back the other way. Open in the middle is Ciarone shooting. Fired a shot, and that right pad came flicking out. Rapier-like. I've kicked the puck away. Absolute beautiful transition right here. Getting the ball. We're seeing a different play right here. The shot from Grossman here on, on the left-hand side. But here's the quick transition play. Sena on the left-hand side. Quick to Chironi. He's really been good for Davos in this tournament. Big slap shot. But look at it. Just off of the shaft of Usher stick into the net. But nice job. That's what Davos does so quick. The puck is transitioned in a millisecond. Uh, I thought he got it with the pad, but it was the blocker stick combination that did it. Great save no matter how you cut it. Redlish. 35 seconds to go. First period. 2 0. DeVos leading. 2011 Spengler Cup Championship game. Breakfast at the Spengler here on TSN. And it's great to have you with us wherever you're looking in across Canada in this great hockey season that it is. World Junior Spengler Cup. Redlish takes the feed. He just missed that penalty shot. Could have gotten his team on the scoreboard. And he'll hustle up towards the corner after it. Time runs out. A better finish than a start for Dinamo Riga, but DeVos clearly the better team. Absolutely, they're having a difficult time contending with Dallas speed. This is going to be the issue for them in the second period as well, Paul. So the score after one, it is DeVos two, Dinamo Riga nothing. Coming up tonight, Canada against the U.S. Canada has clinched their group. The USA, a disappointing performance. They'll play for relegation. You can believe it, 7.30 Eastern time. The home team, Davos, with a 2-0 lead. And in the quarterfinal, six teams, remember, qualified. 
uh, for this or played in the event. Cloton, a Swiss side, made it to the quarters. Canada ended up playing to the in the quarters after losing badly to Davos. They lost to Wolfsburg in those quarterfinals, leaving Wolfsburg to play Riga. Vitkovici from Czech Republic losing to Davos, and that's how we have this Davos Riga Spengler Cup final. Out in the snow to get a coffee, or maybe something else, on this New Year's Day Eve. Coming up Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, it's the uh, World Under-17 Hockey Challenge. Nine of the last 11 first-round picks in the NHL have played in the Under-17 Challenge, and they're playing it in Windsor. Don't think Windsor is getting this kind of snow. Boy, those ski resorts are loving this in Davos, Switzerland. It is 2-0 for the host club Davos as they lead Dinamo Riga of Latvia. Russian sides have dominated the uh, last five events, actually, when you think about the Spengler Cup, winning the last three KHL teams are Russian clubs. Last year, it was St. Petersburg beating Canada in the final. Before that, Minsk and then Moscow. Canada, the last team to beat a Russian side. That was back in 2007. And now, Dinamo Riga will be forced to come from behind if they're to make it four straight Spangler Cups. And it's a Riga side with a familiar name to NHL fans. Sandus Ozilic, who won a cup with Colorado. And he's with Paul. Well, a familiar face to uh, hockey fans all across Canada. Sandus Ozilinch, the captain of Dinamo Riga, one of the uh, great Latvian hockey players of all time. Can you tell us when you decided to go home and what's it like playing back in your home country? Uh, uh, playing go home is unbelievable. It's uh, We have such a great uh, fan support, people support, everybody uh, follows hockey. It's kind of a national sport right now, so uh, it's really pleasure and uh, enjoyable time right now. Sandus, this is almost the national team for Latvia. When I look at the roster and all the players, do you think playing together in the KHL will make the Latvian national program stronger? Uh, hopefully, but it's not going to happen in uh, two or three years. It's going to take a little bit longer than that, and uh, it's uh, it's such a great opportunity for younger players to come and play and have an opportunity to play uh, in a team that plays at KHL because uh, I, th I believe that uh, our uh, uh, philosophy is uh, to have as many uh, local players as uh, we can to have a, on the team to play them for. Do you think that we'll see in the future, and are we seeing now, more young players, Latvian or Russian or, or whatever, saying, I want to stay over here and play rather than go over and play in North America? Uh, it's really hard to say. I think uh, just by guessing, uh, I believe that uh, there will be less players who will uh, take a chance and go and uh, kind of, if it's a 50-50 chance or even less than that, that they will uh, spend uh, two or three years, they'd be willing to spend two or three years in the minor leagues to develop as uh, complete hockey players and then have a chance to play in the NHL. I'll let you go, but I do want to ask you one question about this game. Uh, yeah. They are really quick. Uh, you're on the blue line. You've got to really got to stay on top of it. Yeah, they uh, they really uh, surprised us by their speed and their uh, all-around play in, uh, in our zone by their pressure, and uh, we were not ready for it. So, so we have to make some changes to adjust to it and uh, have a better second and third period. Sanders, thank you very much for your time. It's nice to see you again. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah. Sanders Ozilinch, uh, the captain of Dinamo Riga uh, and one of the greatest Latvian hockey players of all time. You're right about that, Paul. 875 games in the NHL and, of course, won that Stanley Cup in 96. His coach then was Mark Crawford. As Mark Crawford, of course, coached Canada at this year's Spengler Cup. And welcome back. Both teams making their way out onto the ice, uh, talking to Sandus Ozilinch there just a few moments ago. And interesting to hear him remark about, uh, wow, we're surprised by their speed. Uh, you know they've really caught them. And it's interesting that he mentioned that because I know that the, the head coach, Pekka Rautakelio, who's coached in Switzerland, very familiar with Davos, the thing that he tried to get across to them this morning in his pregame speech over breakfast is to be aware of their speed, that they're as fast as any team they're going to face in the KHL. So for Ozilinch to say that, it's a bit of surprising to me, Paul. Well, and I sensed a little bit of frustration as well. You know, the fact they haven't done much in the power play. They've had chances. The penalty shot that Redlish had not going their way so far. And it bears mentioning again, and I will, uh, 
it's a punishing schedule at this stage. You know, they played last night. It's a tough game. Uh, they ended up winning against Wolfsburg to punch their ticket to the championship game. But by the time you clean up, shower, get out of here, it's 10.30, 11 o'clock local time, and you've got to be back in the ice about 12 hours later. I mean, that's a tough turnaround, no matter how good a shape you're in. Especially, especially given the fact that you're playing a team like Davos is, that just drives the tempo up. So you know you're coming, you're fatigued, you're tired, your legs aren't there, your mind's a little bit wandering, and you have to play the hometown team, which just happens to be, in my mind, the best team in Germany, and by far the fastest team here. Great tradition. This is a this is a big event in Switzerland over the holidays. It's on television all across the country, well covered in the media. And the home team has not won the title since 2006. It'll be a big TV audience in Switzerland for this. And glad to have you as part of the Canadian audience, wherever you're looking in this morning. A little bit earlier, not quite as painful if you're out in the East Coast. A couple of tweets from people watching in Nova Scotia. A few people rubbing the sleep out of their eyes in central Canada, Ontario. Out west, maybe you're just coming back from a big night out. <laughs> And the puck just cleared out. Von Arks looked over his shoulder, looking for some help. Throws it across in front. Yogi comes in. Galvins up there battling with Tatichuk. Redlish passing it up ahead. This is Michaelis Redlish. Certainly been the most dynamic offensive player that Dinamo has had in this game. He got it back there trying to wind up and crank it was Maya, and that was tipped way up over the glass and into the netting. Some excellent defensive play by number 91 for Davos Grossman. Two really nice plays. First, the poke check on Redledge. And you see him come sliding across, blocking that shot by number 87, Maya. Nice job. We've seen him grow over the last couple of years as well. Definitely a future candidate for the Swiss national team. A younger defenseman, physical, skates very, very well. We've seen him come of age here in this edition of the Spangler Cup. Long pass up ahead there. Redlish couldn't get his stick on it to intercept. And now Christianis Redlish moves it up along the boards. Two Redlishes out in the ice, so if it sounds like they're everywhere, it's not quite the case. Puck moved up there by Oza Lynch. Oza Lynch, Lundmark's up there. Lundmark knocked down in the corner, looking at the referee uh, with hope of a penalty being called, but shaken off, comes back up, scores! Lundmark got it! Jamie Lundmark, who was hauled down in the corner, thought there should have been a penalty call, but he got up, got back into the play, and is rewarded. You're absolutely right. Look at the pass coming over right here, but Lundmark in perfect position. I thought Barrow was a little bit slow to react here. Nice pass by Sapoulis right here. One-timer, but look at him step right into it. Great low shot. Went through the legs of Grossman as well. A bear number 35, the goaltender for Davos. You're going to see late to the party right here. But he beat just wide on the blocker side. It's always the little things, though, right? He gets dragged down in the corner, thought a penalty should have been called, kind of looked at the ref, the ref sort of shook it off, and he didn't, you know, he didn't sort of skate back slowly into position. He hustled back out to the top of the slot because he knew his team still had something on the go over to him, and you saw how it ended. You're absolutely right. He put himself in position to get that pass. And streaking up now, Senya right in there. Got a cross in front. Juna stayed with him. And the puck was knocked away. Senya so quick. And Drass is knocked down. Long pass comes up ahead. Pozins churning up towards the corner. Waiting for his teammates to catch up. Slides it down low. Pozins now coming in to help out. Working along the boards is in Drassis, but it comes back out. Rekis, long wrist shot. That'll just wobble towards the corner. And Riga will hustle in a change. Long pass comes up to Sieber. Fired across in front of the net. Pass into the mid slot there. Streaking in was Dario Burglar. Up towards the line. Poked up to the corner by Sieber. He spun around. Burglar and Von Arks hanging back. Von Arks was there in the high slot. Wrist shot comes in. Burglar was in front, but turned over. And back comes Riga. 
Skipping in over the blue line, dropping the shoulder and trying to drive it towards the net with Stalls. One of the players gets tangled up with the referee in the corner. That's the reaction from the crowd. Play continues. And here comes Von Arks, three on two, back the other way. Von Arks the trailer, but DeVos getting a line change in. Puck will bounce back outside the blue line. Things really going back and forth here for this sequence. Leading into that shot was Guntis Galvins, and that was stopped. Comes up to the side of the net. Redlish twisting and turning, trying to get loose. He's got Galvins in front, comes around, gets a shot away. Vera dropped the pad down and knocked it aside. Pressure still on here from Riga. Sensing they can get the equalizer. Working it hard, Lucienis being boxed out there by Beat Forrester. Forrester really throwing a net over him. Puck comes back to the line, knocked down by Galvin, shooting! That one was tipped and just wobbled precariously through the crease. Kept in though, flipped up to the corner. Forrester zips it up around the boards and out. Tadichuk looking for it, oh knocked aside. Sipul is trying to come in. Buck rolled across, delayed penalty coming up against DeVos. Buck fired in there to Barra. He will hang on to it. That was Jekyll's Redlish coming in on the left side. When we come back, a power play for Riga. Welcome back. Right off the faceoff. Oh, Oscar Sibulskis leaned into that. The world championship veteran from last year. I saw him take a couple of shots like that from the point. He's got a good one from that left point position. Oh, did he ever step into that? The puck was just sitting perfectly for him. Look at Barris stabbing it, but Sibulskis, big shot. Big stick on the ice. Okay. Take it for you, okay? Stick on ice. Okay. Riga power play. Ozelinch over on the right point. Sipulis over on the left. Or, pardon me, Sipulskis. Pretty impressive blue line duo. A little bit more patience required for Riga. I know Lundberg's feeling good after last, that last goal he scored from the slot, but you're not going to beat a goal from Rivera in that distance. Patience, control the puck. That's going to be the key here for Riga on the power play. Good job. Off the draw, comes back. Sipulskis couldn't unload that time. See if they work it around. Ozelinch up around the circle, loves to pinch in. Sibulskis over to Ozelinch. Doesn't have a shot either. You see DeVos very aggressive in the penalty kill. They'll come right out and challenge at the blue line. One timer knocked in towards the goal. That was Lindmark. He's just hanging in front. Senya will twist it around. Vera. Up for Ninema, and he will just clear it down the ice. Would have made a difficult situation. I wasn't quite sure what Ninema was doing right there. But Bear was very calm and poised with the puck. Carsons gets it back. Redlish up for Carsons. He gets uh, tangled up there with his with his teammate Ozelinch, who's got it now. Ozelinch with a look through. Back to the top of the point. Galvins winds up, shoots. Big rebound comes out and is clear. That's the play they wanted to set up Galvin's. Exactly. Worked hard to get the puck back to Galvin's. Good shot, but Barrett able to make sure that didn't go past him and controlled his rebound. Galvin's clears it in there. Oh, the puck rolls right through the slot. And Galvin's was already backpedaling. He'll start back. Redlish is with him. So is Lucienis. Galvin's on the way through. Carson's number 15 trying to help him out. Michaelis Redlish over towards the corner now. Lucienis just burrowed his way right through, and the puck knocked down. It's a breakaway. In comes Sikora. Big chance. Fired it high and wide. Peter Sikora, shorthanded breakaway. You see the bouncing puck right here. Sikora taking full advantage of it. Clear breakaway from the red line. Looked at him. Goalie's out far and he's trying to shelf the ball, but the puck was on in right there. Put it up over the, the goaltender into the mesh. And look at this ref falling down. Got a little bit of a laugh from the crowd on that play then. Number six for Davos has to be more controlled. Timmy Ramble, more controlled the puck. He's got time right there, used the glass, but he panicked a little bit when he thought there were men on top of him. Winter Sander plays it in. Ankepans. Teams at even strength. Riga turning it up here in the second period. And the fans trying to will their team back into it. 
up at the side of the net with some extra jump definitely from Dinamo Riga taking the scenic route around all the way there was anchor pants but he had his pocket picked back in comes Forrester shoots from the sharp angle that was steered away Jusser's no problem there had the angle covered Sieber taps it in played seven minutes in this second period Championship game 2011 Spangler Cup. Indrasis, number 17 up there, leading into his man. Now hustling up was Potzins. Niedema. Gets it up along the boards, breaking down the left side is Tadichuk, but couldn't get it across to him. Again, that quick breakout. Oh, turned over there, rolling puck, and Niedema back to pick it up after it was almost stolen by Meeks Indrasis. Redlish. Flicks it up off the boards and out. Ramholm. Back, throws it up the middle. Back in over the blue line. Puck rolling around. That was Earl up there as well. Earl just missed that pass. Rene back. Starting back for DeVos. Hits the line on the move. He's got Earl with him. Dishes off to him. Looking towards the front of the net. Earl shoots right in there. Juicers grabs it and hangs on. Good job with Eusters right there, staying with the play. Earl has been so dynamic in this tournament. You can tell the big ice just fits his style perfectly well, but I like the way Eusters stayed with that. Puck coming through several different pairs of legs, making the save in the Dinamo Riga net. They have announced the tournament all-star team. We've just been given that information, so I'll pass it along to you as soon as we get a chance. I know if you had that Spengler all-star team pool going, you'll want to... You'll want to know. Puck pushed up towards the corner by Maya. Lundmark up there as well. Puck loose at the side. Oh, almost sneaking through is Maya. Kids Maya just parked off the edge of the crease. Works out there well with Lundmark, who's got it along the boards now. Just looking for a bit of room. Couldn't find much. He's chased back. Oh, there's a nice little move by Lundmark. Rolls it in. Not much on it as it came in towards the net, and it was just steered away. Ritzi plays it down the ice. And fired right back up, right on goal, so no icing. Carsoms over for Ozelinch. Moving in, Ozelinch looking to the front of the net, tried to get it through for Redlish, who was breaking through at his stick in the ice, but he's got the puck now. Redlish dancing around on his knee, still trying to make the play. He is hauled down and a penalty coming up against DeVos. He has been a dynamo. Michaelis Redlish, number 19, very fast skater. Played in seven world championships and we've seen a great example of a speedy little guy. He's five foot ten. He tell me he couldn't play in the NHL with those skills. He's certainly got great moves out here. He's turned Ramholt in inside out and Ramholt pulled him down with hook. Second time Ramholt's taking a penalty against Ramholt here in the second period. So Ramholt is off, and Dinamo with a big chance here at the power play. You can sort of sense the momentum starting to go their way here in the second period. We'll see if they can seize the opportunity and tie this game up. Uh, there's a holding penalty right off the faceoff, and there went the power play, all four seconds of it. We just talked about how effective Michaelis Radlish has been here, and watching the hold on Forster, just an ill-advised call right here. I know what he wants to do. He wants to force him in the boards, help to seal the zone so that the puck can stay in. Just an ill-advised call. Four seconds into the power play. A real killer here for Dinamo. It'll stick across the bridge of the nose for Rene back. There's Redlish in the penalty box. So the teams had even strength, four on four, for the next minute and 56 seconds. Lundmark pushes the puck up ahead. 
A little bit of extra room out there. This could be entertaining. Ozilich down low in the corner, trying to get it in front. It rolls around. Barra steers it away. And Redlish skating back. No icing. Davos making a complete change. Again, playing four on four. Oza Lynch up along the right side, losing possession of that puck. And here's Tadicek. Tadicek tucking it up ahead there for Grossman. Moving up in over the blue line. Backhand shot from Sikora. Juicer's out to stop that. Tadicek coming over to look for it. Tadicek and Sikora. Very dangerous. And that's why. Pavel Brindle gets the goal. And it is three to one. I'll tell you, Oslinch was out on, his, on, on just absolutely running around right here. Puck coming wide open. Look, just coming into the play late, you just miss him on the outside. He took a huge circle and just allowed Brendel to go right in front of the net. Probably some skating out towards the blue, and there he is coming from behind the net. Didn't even go in front of the net to take Brendel. I was watching the play from here. You don't see it on the highlight. He skated right by Brendel, pivoted back towards the board, which allowed Brendel to stand right there, completely unguarded. It was an easy pass over from, from the uh, Davos defense with Grossman. Brendel, nothing to do but just to tap it in. Well, you get those checks out there. Tadichuk, Sikora, throw Brendel out there. Man. Some of the imports on this DeVos team, <laughs> no, and on the they big, do their yeah. job. And on the big rink, they're great. They all skate well. They move the puck. But the, the key thing, watch, is always in movement. Always in movement. So the most important thing as a defenseman, you've got to make sure that you secure the front of the net. Turnover there after Rene back was drilled. Sotniks fired it wide. Puck knocked down there by Rekis. Fires it in. And Barra stops that. So the uh, all-star team has been announced. No Canadians. You wouldn't expect it this year. Roman Malik, the fine goaltender from Bitkovici, had a great tournament. Sandus Ozilinch, Biat Forrester back in the blue line. And up front, Robbie Earl has just been great. Kai Hosfeld, the uh, fine German scorer, leading scorer on the team. And Peter Sikora over on the other wing. Uh, dominated by DeVos with Earl, Sikora, Forrester. No surprise there. They've been the best team in the tournament. Jogi up there, had it knocked away from him. Teams at even strength, that was a four-second power play for DeVos. Hardly a, worth mentioning, really. Senya. Here's Senya. Cironi. Now Senya scurrying after it. Senya looking towards the front. He's got Cironi dangling up there. So was Steinman. Steinman knocked it down. Oh, the turnover there. And here comes Sieber back the other way, skipping in over the blue line. Burglar going for the front of the net. Sieber tried to fire it across. Burglar opened just off the edge of the crease. Riga coming in with three. Ozilinch tips it up. Nice little tip pass up there ahead to Redlish. Trying to throw it across. Puck fired in there. Down in front was Lundmark looking for it. Oh, puck kept in at the blue line. By Sibulskis fired it up. And that was knocked away. Race for it now. Moving up is Burglar. Drops back out. Puck fired by Steinmans. Did not miss by much. Fans hollering for a penalty there after Sieber was upended in the corner. Meanwhile, Lundmark fires it up towards the goal. That'll come up around the boards. Dinamo trying to set something up here. Lundmark down in the corner, looking towards the front of the net. Oh, he had Sotniks down there, moved in from the point. Lundmark working it hard along the boards, getting some help. 
And Mayo was up there to help him, but now a race for the puck. It's Tadichek looking towards the front of the net for Sakura. Von Arks up there as well. Pushes it up along the boards. Cleared away by Sotniks, but not out. Buck fired in there by Jogi. That was knocked away. Cruising in over the blue line. Indrasis. Pardon me, that's Sapoulis. Number 47, Sapoulis trying to get it out towards the front of the net. Puck hopping and rolling around. And quickly away comes Tadicek. Moving in. Offside called on DeVos as Tadicek was breaking away quickly. A couple of wingers one step ahead. Uh, here's a big check. Jamie Lundmark crushing him right here in the corner. All about keeping your feet. You'll see Siebert, the young player for Davos right there. But look at Lundmark just crushing it. It's all in your lower body strength. Paul, you can see the thrust coming from, from Lundmark's legs just prior to making that check. Robin Grossman. Puck moved up there by Ninema. Ninema skating back to pick it up. Here comes Earl. In over the line. Takes it wide. Earl being watched there by Redlish. Seen him carry it through two or three guys at once in this tournament. Earl, the all-star winger. Puck passed up towards Senya, missed him. They waved the icing off. No! Icing waved off again. It looks like a game of baseline tennis right now. One shot, throw puck full length of the ice. Get it back, throw the puck to full length of the ice. Well, that's the game DeVos wants you to play. That's their game. Moving in is Lucienis. And the puck pulled away from him, comes up around the boards. Redlish not able to keep it in. That's Jacobs. Redlish throws it across. And offside is called on Dinamo Riga. Tough play there from Redlish on the blue line. You can see a lot of from where we're seeing a lot of snow on the ice right now. Difficult pucks bouncing all over the place. Difficult for the players to keep it in when they're pressing onto either blue line. Just over five minutes to go, second period. DeVos looking for their 15th Spengler Cup championship. But it will be their first since 2006. Oh, poor bounce there, and almost jumping on top of it was uh, Dario Burglar. Poor bounce for uh, Riga, that is. Good job by Lundmark, pushing it up towards the corner. Sipoulis looking for it, knocked away. Here comes Steinman striding up there, drops it back for Burglar, shoots. And that ricochets up over the glass and out of play. Play just back underway, number 83, Rado Van Arks clearing the puck down into the Dynamo zone. Puck comes back out, Van Arks with a little reload, and the puck knocked away from him that time. Tried the pass, tried the shot, back the other way, spin around here. Sibulskis was up, number 44, and back quickly the other way come DeVos. Tadichuk, long pass up ahead, then he goes up looking for the return feed towards the front of the net. There it came, but Bukarts was there to intercept, and he sent it back the other direction. Back and forth they go. Galvins fires it in. Vera knocked that away. But Brady in front of the net. Oh, good chance for Bukarts. Looked as though it went to his backhand, however. Long pass up ahead. Sakura couldn't quite catch up to it. Man wide open in front. Sakura couldn't get it back across. And here we go. Change partners and dance. Back the other way. Ozilins plays it over. Posins up along the boards. Posins in Drassus. And pushing away at it. And Drassus. Finally, the puck comes loose, and it's flipped out. And Sakura, the legs look a little bit heavy. He catches up to it in the corner, dishes it back out, a blind pass, and back the other way come Dinamo. Up the middle, and Drassus dumps it in over the blue line. Nobody there to get to it. Podzins was the closest. 
Rizzi. He misses it. Juicers. Under three minutes to go. Rene back with it here in this second period. DeVos leading three to one. Little spark when Riga got their goal. But it's kind of faded away a little bit. And I wonder if the legs are a little heavy after that late game last night and the noontime local start. Well, not looking like heavy legs at all there. Walking right through number 73, Nicholas Lucienis, and he continues the chase. Lucienis gets it up along the boards, takes the return feed. Redlish going for the front. Lucienis tried to center it, and Rizzi got a stick on it to knock it out of harm's way for the time being. Oh, he had Parsons wide open in front there. An excellent defensive play by Monarchs, getting a stick in front of it. They just have to knock away that pass. But how about that nice rush by Lucienis? Right through the neutral zone and right in on goal. Oh, the puck turned over here. This is Burglar. Not much on that shot. Brendel up going after it. Brendel scoring the third goal for DeVos in this game. Tiptoeing in over the line now. Maya fires one up into the corner. Lundmark hustling over there after it. Puck fired that, hit the side of the net. Maya after the loose puck. Lundmark up into the fray as well. Chips it up around the boards. And the puck finally just steered out. This is Sibulskis. Up the middle. Long wrist shot. Vera steers that away. Now Sapoulis tried to get it out in front for Sabolskis, and it rolls to Berra, and he hangs on. Oh, he had May at number 87 floating through. Tried to Sabolskis, tried to get the puck out to him. Just not able to convert the save here. Another nice effort right here. We talked about him a moment earlier. But number 73, Eustinius. Watch us split the Davos defense right here. Just unable to convert, though. An excellent poke check by the Davos both in Rachel Berra. Lucianis can play uh, wing or center. He's a Finnish player, a Finnish import on this Dinamo Riga team. Right off the draw. Puck pushed on goal, and that is grabbed and held. That was Gertz Ankepans making the move off the faceoff. We haven't called his name a lot. Good job. Look at him taking his boots right off the draw. We haven't called his name a lot today. One of, selected as one of Dinamo Riga's three top players in this tournament, Paul, but very quiet here this afternoon against Davos. Played in a couple of Olympics, and he's he's kind of made the tour around Europe. He's not just played in the KHL. Uh, he's also played in Norway, spent a little bit of time there, Germany. So a very seasoned veteran hockey player, and I've seen him at the World Championship as well, where he's, he's a real stalwart with the team. Gugisberg. Up ahead. Forrester moves it over. As Brendel augured himself into the ice, trying to wind up and pound that on goal. Oh, nice little move here. Earl cuts in front. Knocked away. This is Beat Forrester with it. Under a minute to go. Second period. Forrester takes the long route around. Getting locked up there in the corner. Stahl's trying to get it out. And back he will come. Time to create something here with a three on two. Puck dropped back. Redlish. Got the shot in. Rebound. Tapped in behind the net. Late period pressure from Dinamo. Back out to the line. Ozelin fires it up. Tip there at the side of the goal. Ankepans with the active stick had it down there. Trying to redirect it. Ozelin at the blue line. Desperately trying to keep that puck in. Four seconds left. Time's going to tick down here. Maybe one more shot. Oh. Top of the slot. Swing and a miss there by Ankepans. Just missed. And Ozelin's right in there to do a, a little bit of posturing. Good flurry of action here by Dinamo to end the period. They're going to need to carry this over into the third if they have any hopes of coming back into this game. It's been a long tournament for both teams. But Dinamo Riga will need just a little bit more in the tank in the third. Well, it was a disappointing World Junior Championship for the Americans. A loss last night. Now they'll try just to stay from uh, falling down to the B pool. Canada, USA tonight. Canada has clinched their group 7.30 Eastern time. Our coverage of World Juniors continues. Wow, I wonder how many of those branches will come down before the snow finally ends in Davos, Switzerland. Davos, they have, of course, the 3-1 lead trying to win the Spengler Cup as we, on this final day, this New Year's Eve day, the tournament winding up. And let's go back to Davos now with their thoughts, Paul and Doug.
So looking back on uh, the 2011 Spengler Cup, and of course for Canadian hockey fans, the big question is, what went wrong? What needs to change? Certainly one of the most disappointing Spengler Cups that I've seen from a Canadian perspective in the 10 years that we've been coming here. They didn't even make it as far as the semifinal. What do you do? I think number one, you have to take take a look at your roster, uh, and it's a it's always a difficult thing to to sort of do a, a post mortem on a team, particularly one that in, includes so many players that have played so well for Canada in this tournament since we've been coming here, Paul. You know, half a dozen guys to ten guys that, that have played in five, six, seven, eight tournaments. But what that also illustrates is the team was getting a little bit old. You can see that the foot speed and the overall team speed wasn't what it wasn't what it needs to be in a tournament like this. And I think that's the first thing. And secondly. In short tournaments like this, you always end up finding a couple, three guys that become your marquee go-to scorers. And that was something that was lacking in Team Canada's lineup. They never found a guy that could really carry the offensive load when they needed it most. So uh, reading between the lines there, and, and I think that was reflected in our chat with Mark Crawford, there has to be a bit of a, a, bit of a change of the guard. Absolutely, and, and that's difficult to say because these guys have served Canada so well in this tournament. But I think what needs to happen, like so many teams is, that do get a little bit older, is you need a breath of fresh air. You need a new nucleus of younger players to come in and begin to represent Canada at this event. Uh, the other thing that stands out for me, uh, regardless of how things turn out in this game, whether uh, Dinamo Riga wins it or not, is Russian or KHL dominance. Uh, this is five years in a row that a, a Russian or KHL team has been in this championship game, and I don't see that changing a bit. No, you know, where it really started was, I believe, in 2005 when, when uh, Dave King was coaching Magnitogorsk here, and they, they really they spanked Canada in the final, 8-1. to one, And, you know, Dave King said something to me, I remember in the morning skates, saying, you know what, watch our team. This is indicative of where Russian hockey is going. He cited two particular reasons. One, the reinvestment in Russian development. And the second is the fact that he believed, even in 2005, that the KHL was going to be really the magnet for both Russian players. And we're starting to see that less and less of them playing in the National Hockey League, but it was also going to be the magnet for the best European players to come and play in that league. And again, that's happening as well. You see the best KHL team stocked with really top Swedish, Finnish talent, and Swiss players, in fact, are also beginning to play in that league. So I think you're right, Paul. You're going to consistently see KHL teams doing very well in this tournament. Well, the positive side of it is that uh, it's one tournament over the Christmas season that Canada doesn't run roughshod over everybody every year, and it's going to make it that much sweeter when they do manage to win a Spengler Cup title again. The uh, mascot at the Spengler Cup is named uh, Hitch. Quite talented to be able to drive the Zamboni. Just don't hitch anything. Happy New Year, everybody. In Windsor, Ontario right now, it's the World Under-17 Hockey Challenge, and you can see the final, the gold medal game, this coming Wednesday, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, on TSN and TSN Mobile TV. Well, we talked about success of Davos trying to win their first championship since 2006 when they beat Canada. Looking for a 15th overall. Take a look at 2004. That win over Sparta Prague. That was the NHL lockout year. The team included Rick Nash, Joe Thornton, Martin saint louis and Alexandre Day. Davos has dominated, really, play at the Spengler and in the Swiss League. Still out in the snow, and a big thumbs up for Davos. They lead it 3-1. to one. And welcome back. Good morning to you. Hope you're uh, enjoying breakfast at the Spangler Cup. Paul Romanek along with Doug Honiger. And it's the championship game 2011. The, uh, I'm assuming she's supporting uh, Dinamo Riga. <laughs> I would hope, certainly hope so with that Dinamo Riga jersey on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and DeVos, it's been a while between championships for them. It's their tournament. They had a nice little run with Canada a few years back, but they have not won it since 2006. Arno Del Cordo, their uh, great veteran coach in his 16th season here. I've mentioned that a couple of times. And he's looking for his fifth Spengler Cup title. That will be more than any other coach in the history of this club. And in terms of the history of the team, it will be the 15th title. There's Freddie Pargazzi, uh, the man. You can see the uh, top half of his head. He's the guy. There we go. Stand up, Freddie. Uh, he is the man who pulls the puppet strings, uh, invites the teams, and organizes the Spengler Cup tournament. Been working with Freddie for a good decade now and had a nice long talk with him this week about the future and 
what teams they'd like to bring over, uh, some nice ideas, bring an American League uh, team over here. They have done that in the past. Uh, the Rochester Americans have come over. The U.S. has sent a national team in the past. Lots of different options on the table. They would love to get the Nordics involved again, uh, Sweden or Finland, or maybe even a second KHL team. Away we go, third period underway. Tadichuk knocked down. Well, then the puck turned over. Tadichuk right in front, chops away at it. It's still loose. Sakura trying to get it back out for Tadichuk. So dangerous, those two Czech players, Sakura and Tadichuk. And Von Arch plays beautifully with them in the middle. This line is just simply unstoppable throughout this tournament. Zipoulos, given a bump there along the boards. Ozilinch, well up there after it. Long pass comes out, Ozilinch got caught. Moving in is Gugisberg, and that is stopped. Ozilinch, with visions of getting some offense going, dancing in his eyes, was up there deep, and he got caught. That whole wing was wide open for Gugisberg. And you're absolutely right. He really plays like a forward more than a defense, and he's up all the time. I thought Gugisberg could challenge him a little bit more here. Big slap shot, nice save by Jurisers, but Oslin Paul have called him out a few times and he was so, so undisciplined. When he clicks offensively, yeah, that's a great reward for your team, but more often than not, he finds himself as a liability to this Dino, Dino Riga team. Rekis, number six, pushes his man down. Stalls, plays it up ahead. Bukarts fires one in and Barra stops that, no problem. Barra's looked very impressive in, in goal for DeVos today. I expected they were going to come back with the number one goaltender, Giannone, particularly because he does play for Davos, but Barra grew up in this organization, plays for Beal in the Swiss League, and it's an interesting move that Arno Del Cortos decided to split the games evenly between both goaltenders in the tournament. Yeah, I thought he would have started Giannone, who's the actual club team yeah. goalie in the league, but... Sotniks plays it up ahead. Andrasis trying to move it in, but offside called on Dinamo Riga. His KHL team came out and started the second period with some real jump just into this third period, and they don't quite seem to have that spark again. They played last night. You've got the turnaround in about 12 hours to come back and play for a championship. Zibulskis lays it up ahead on the wing. Striding up there after it. And delayed penalty coming up. It is going to go against DeVos. Certainly the lion's share of chances on the power play have gone to Dinamo Riga. Back at the line. Pozin's going towards the front of the net. They work it back. Fired up there by Sibulskis. Knocked out in front. Back out for Sibulskis again. And a hooking penalty coming up. It is going to go against Devos, that's going to be number 11, Yannick Steinman heading off. Steinman's going to go off the hook. He grabs the goals, he's down in the offensive zone. Sort of a weak call. He's swung his stick out and got him in there. You see it right here, oh, they cut it off. But right here, you know, but Sobolsk is in, as a result going off. This gives Dinamo Riga an opportunity to get back into the game. Just two minutes gone here in the third period. Power play, face off in the offensive zone. One area where they've been traditionally strong this year in the KHL zone, their power play. They're going to certainly need it to come through here. Come on, just take the right. The right one. Take the Galvin's looking forward there at the blue line, but he'll backpedal again. DeVos, watch them shorthanded. Very aggressive. We've seen them score a, a shorthanded goal, at least one. I believe they have a couple in the tournament, and they also just stack up across their own blue line. Karsums knocks that down, shoots right on. Barra stops that. Very uncharacteristic of DeVos, shorthanded to be that careless with the puck. Well, and that's a situation where Yogi, the defensive number 97, he's going to be smarter on the blue That was did a great job winning the puck. They got it back to kill some time, but don't get greedy. Don't look for this long breakout pass from the neutral zone. In the middle of the ice, just get it on the boards and get it out of the zone. Remember, you're killing a penalty, it's still defensive thinking first. Redlish moves it up. Oh, puck knocked down in front. Oh, it came across there. Carsons was wide open just over to the right of Vera. Well, 
Luceni has tried to get the puck across to him right here. Carson wide open. Nice job by Yogi to get down. Derek covering up. Good little action right here. They need something to click here. 0 for 5. Power play this afternoon. Now, what a great play by Sakura, who got the stick down there. <laughs> And uh, broke up what would have been a great scoring chance. By the way, in case you haven't noticed it, if, you, if you're a 1960s cartoon fan, you see Vera on the mask has Yogi Bear. <laughs> I'm guessing that's his nickname. Redlish. Taps it up ahead. Carsons tried to play it back. Puck played up by Carsons to Redlish. Great little puck handler. And moves it across there. Knocked down by Senya. Couldn't clear it. Puck comes back to the top of the point. Fired in there by Galvins. And that's stopped by Barra. And he'll hang on. And that's exactly what I want to do. Luceni's a smart player. Crafty guy. Small, good hands. You want to work the play the way he did right there. And then he get back to Carson's on the blue end. That's a good sequence right here for Dino Riga. Looking good on the part. The best they have so far. This being their sixth power play of the game. Thirty-six shots on thirty-six shot on goal for Riga. Here comes Sibolskis. Stop at the line. Lundmark has the one goal for Dynamo Riga. Oh, you, a veteran player like Oslin's right there. It's like a Sunday skate at times. Gets the puck sloppy coming over the blue line. Here comes Lundmark gathering speed up in over the blue line. Lundmark still with that puck. Moving in. Shoots. Barra stops that. Lundmark with a rebound. Centers it out in front. They scramble away after it. And it's a tripping penalty coming up against DeVos. Right down in the neighborhood was Galvin's. He was pulled down. And it's another power play chance. It will be a two-man advantage for Dynamo for 19 seconds. And that's what you want. Drive the net away, Jamie Lundberg. It's all Lundberg here, 83. Driving that around to create that scoring chance right here. Right here. Ramble, the defense is his third hook of the game. His third minor penalty. They're taking boot cards in front. You've just got to use your shoulder and drive him through. You can't take the easy route with a hook. Excuse me, they're calling it a trip there. Trip or a hook. Either way, the third minor penalty this game for Ramble to Davos defense. Forrester picks it up. This is Ozelinch. Well, wake up call time here for Dinamo Riga. You get the sense this two man advantage and then a one man advantage could be a game changer. Now, is that another penalty coming up? A slashing call. And that's going to go against Dinamo Riga. Oh. Well, like I was saying, if you take a penalty and snuff up the power play. Face off coming all the way back down into the Riga zone. Well, you're going to see right here, we see the defense, excuse me, the Ford for Davos taking Ozilinch hard in the board. Ozilinch turned around and gave him a two hander. Just accept the hit, go on with it. You know that the ref is going to be looking for a makeup call after he's just given two penalties to Davos. A veteran like Ozilinch knows better than that ball. So, it's a four on three advantage. Just ever so briefly, penalized player back on for DeVos. The team's at even strength for the next minute, 36, and then it will be a brief power play for DeVos. And there went the opportunity, but let's see. Working back up there, swinging wide is Sotnyx. Tried to get it across in front. Here's Rekas. Von Arks up watching him. Redlish. Down the middle, Michaelis Redlish in over the blue line. And a race for that puck. Sakura, big chance. He is stopped. Husers. Oh, may have dropped it. I think he had a hold of it, but that was a DeVos player right in there trying to coax a loose puck. And anytime you do that, it's going to draw a crowd. The 
initial chance for Peter Sakura. Look at Sakura, unstoppable. I mean, the thrust of speed to get past the deal on defense. Make a lot of, you'll see what happened right here. So the puck is loose. Earl has every right here to come in and fight for that loose puck. He drives it. They hit the goaltender. The stick was on the ice. He went for the loose puck. Then you see the big defensive ruckus on top of it. Next thing you know, the punch is being thrown. You thought that was loose? I, I thought I, it was I, loose. You could see the puck was right in front of him. It's okay for Earl to come in right there. They didn't know where it was. The defensive came in to cover it up, but the puck at no point in time was covered up by the goaltender, Paul. Uh, let's see. He didn't know where it was. You can see he did not know where it was. Yulser's right here. I think Earl had every right to come in here and try to force it. He didn't run the goaltender. Stick was on the ice the whole time. Oh, yeah. Like like when you played defense and a guy came in and did that, you would have just turned and skated away. Absolutely. Oh, well, that's fine. That, that's yeah. within the playbook. Yeah, right. <laughs> when it comes in, the cross check right across the head. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Was, oh, there goes 37 Honiger to the penalty box right. just for cross checking. That and, Honiger wild eyed look, <laughs> hair trigger. Oh, God. Oh, there you go. 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, I think that's how we met at the World Championships. Puck fired in. Bounces down. Teams at even strength for the next 29 seconds. Lots of room to carry it down there for Maya. And stopped up as he tried to beat two. Two and three guys back for DeVos. Doing a really good job making sure that they support the defensive side of the puck while leading this game three to one. Not taking any risk. Smart defensive play. It's a very well coached hockey team. Redlish. Oh, drops it back. Moving in to Sibulskis. Big chance there. It was set up for him. Wasn't able to finish. Sibulskis gets it down low to the corner. Galvins moves in front. Stick handling around. Lundmark. And then the puck. Fired there by Sibulskis, tipped, and it just saucers its way up over the glass and out of play. Some real good hands by the Riga forward, Canadian Jamie Lomar. Really impressed him today. He's looking to be the best player on the ice for Riga. Offensively very strong, and we all know how good he is defensively. Those are the uh, offsetting penalties from the altercation down in front of the net. In the actual man in the ice situation, only seven seconds left. And the penalty to Ozilinch, and then the teams will be back at even strength. Sibulskis fires a wrist shot through that bobbles and wobbles its way wide of the net. Redlish after it. Teams back at even strength. Puck played up along the boards. Rekis couldn't keep it in. Sibulskis up ahead. Rekis steps in, drops it back. Redlish moving in. Puck fired up high off the glass. Again, Redlish shovels it over the blue line. Carsons couldn't get to it. Von Arks flips it across in front. Puck rolling around. Tatichuk looking for it. This triumvirate of Van Arks, Tatichuk, and Sakura so entertaining to watch for DeVos. Up ahead now for Stahl. Shooting. Good wrist shot right off the chest of Barra. And the rebound cleared out. And that will be an icing call on Dinamo Riga. And away we go. Play just back underway. Played seven minutes of this third period. DeVos leading by two. That much closer to a Spengler Cup championship. Luck played up towards the corner. Redlish back after it. Oh, up back of the net. He's trying to come around there is Brendel. Oh, he centers it. Ricci backhand shot. That was knocked away. Comes out in front. Brendel was looking for it. It rolled there for Ramholt. And someone got a stick on it, and it was knocked out of play. Nice. You, you know what Doug Porto likes his offensive hockey? The thing that, I, that you, you have to be impressed about him is the fact that he tries to coach a team that plays exciting hockey. He understands that this is, at the end of the day, it's, it's an entertainment game. The fans want to be entertained, and he's never gotten away from that. 16 years in DeVos, and I think the biggest ingredient in his games is always the entertainment value. And I think that's one of the reasons why this tournament's been so popular over the last decade as well. Ram Holt fires it in. We'll just stay with that thought. He's head coach of this team for 16 years. He's won five league titles. He's on the way to winning his fifth Spengler Cup title. Could he coach in the NHL? 
big issue that I think that, that he would have a trouble with in the National Hockey League is the fact that he doesn't change the system. He doesn't adapt to the game. He plays the system regardless of the opponent. Win or lose, that's one system. And I think, you know, when he played against the Chicago Blackhawks two years ago, they saw exactly what he was doing. They paced them in that game. Yeah. He refused to make any adjustments. Same thing holds true in some of the games we've seen against Team Canada the past year in this tournament. Does he know enough about the game? Yes. Can he motivate the players well enough? Yes. Does he get along with his players well? Yes. So does he have the core attributes of coaching in the NHL? Absolutely. But I don't think he has those, his, maybe the technical or me, the tactical expertise that some of the European coaches are lacking because they're not so much into the game sort of in-game adjustments with Canadian coaches. Yeah. No, I, I just ask you, it's interesting. It's been interesting living in Europe for the last six years. Uh, you know, where it's nothing to have a foreign head coach of Chelsea or Arsenal or even the English National Football Club, uh, soccer club. Uh, but the NHL still very xenophobic, I find, when it comes to giving Europeans chances to be head coaches. I would agree. I think more than anyone else, I think the Swedes in particular, there's been a number of very good Swedish coaches. I mean, you look at a guy like Bengt Gustafsson, who's had great, experience, great success with the national teams of both Switzerland and Sweden. It's impossible to say that he couldn't coach in the National Hockey League. We haven't seen a lot of Swedes other than Anders Hedberg in senior management position. So Daniel Alfredson certainly looks to be, you know, a potential manager when he retires with Ottawa. Yeah, and believe me, uh, they can be pretty xenophobic in uh, in my adopted home of Great Britain as well. But it doesn't it doesn't filter over to sports. Where you know, clearly the last two managers of I mean it's their game football, and you're looking at an Italian and a Swede, and, and, and nobody blinks. They want to win. Anyway, back to matters at hand. Sorry for the tangent there, but kind of a pet peeve of mine. Up after it. Drassus gets it around the boards. Rekis was looking for it. And chugging down is Burglar. In over the line. Burglar looks over his shoulder, then drops the right shoulder and tries to drive in. Takes the scenic route there around the boards, but quickly back the other way. Pozines in over the blue line. Oh, and he that little move at the line. He had a head of steam going, and it put his teammate in Drassus offside. He did, and the reason was Von Arx did a really nice job holding his position in the center. You can see right now Ninema talking to him from our vantage point. A nice job. It's three across the blue line. The key is Von Arx's centerman right there, driving him off, forcing that offside. Nice, tight discipline by the three Davos defenders. By the way, lots of tweets today in the Twitter sphere from those of you up early. Thanks much. If you want to get into the conversation, it is hashtag Spengler Cup, hashtag TSN. My Twitter handle is Paul underscore Romanuk. Coming up in the halfway point of this third period. And as they always do, the, uh, the fans, especially in the terrace down to our right, that's behind the Riga goal, the fans really starting to get into it. Late yeah. in the game. They have a lot. I mean, this has, you're right, Paul, this has become the tradition in the final game, in the, the third period of the final game, and the Davos fans certainly happy with the outcome so far, leading 3-1 here against Dean Morita. Buck fired up around the boards, had a check looking for it, just rolls out there past Sivulskis. Juicers drops it off. <coughs> Carsons. Ozelic. The great veteran up the middle. Oh, trying to tap it up and great eye hand coordination. It's knocked down. Bindle right in. And what a stop by Juicers. Glorious opportunity right there for Pavel Brindle. Oh. Oh, nice job, Googiesburg intercepting and passing it. Boom, right to the forehand. Brendel streaking. I think he's got a beat. We all know how well he shoots the puck. But look at Eusers coming up big with the glove save right there. How about Googiesburg? Oh, boom. boom. And then taking with the one hand, dangle, a little mini dangle right there. Putting two hands on the stick and then the soft little backhand pass to spring Brando. Eye hand coordination. <laughs> the stick and the puck, the, uh, the lad should be playing. Uh, Cricket or baseball with that kind of moving up there on his knees. Earl pushes it over towards the boards. Brendel lurking down in front. They get it to him. Shooting. Oh, a great pad save there by Eusers as he laid it out on the ice and kicked that puck away. See if that gives his team a boost. Long shot for Redlish and on goal. Tap back up ahead by Sotniks. Dinamo down by two. Senya tried to tip it across. Up 
Up on the wing for Maya. Moving in. Shoots. Knocked away by Barra. Had the angle. Got the arm on it. Deceptive shot by Maya right there. Kim coming in. I thought he was going to go wide. Chose to go short side. Good blocker save by Barra, who has been outstanding here. Facing over 40 shots. This after making Steve Marie. Quite sure who that is. Santa Claus <laughs> after the rush. Little time off to come and watch the game. Getting ready for tonight. Hey, if anyone deserves a big New Year's <laughs> Eve, it's Santa Claus. <laughs> Pounded hard till the 25th. Winder down in Davos. Take in the final and get ready to go hard tonight. Sold out 6,500. And they would fill a double the capacity if there was enough seats in here to get that. You cannot shoehorn another person in here. And that, by the way, is with the blizzard going on outside that's been going for basically the last day and a half. Redlish clears it up to the corner. Forrester looking for Tadichuk. Redlish. And the puck cleared out. And I like that play from Davos. It's a tactic we've seen numerous times. I know it's got to frustrate Ozilinch because they're starting to put some pressure on right there, but that's something Davos is very confident in. They don't mind dumping the puck. Though. We've seen that numerous times. Pressure, ice it, regroup, get ready for the faceoff. Janice had it knocked away. Cruising up there with Sakura, but turned around. Back in comes Redlish. And turned over at the blue line. A three on one. Brendel. Well, they made a hash out of that, didn't they? Yeah, look at the feed to Von Arx there. Not a smart play either. Von Arx is left hander coming on the left hand side. Would not have had much to do with the puck. I thought it was smart to get it right back to Goody's, but it's wide open in the slot. It was clearing my throat at three on one. <laughs> get that goal call ready. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and and, and uh, no, not that time. Certainly butchered that opportunity. Sonyx. Zotnik's going to ring it in around the boards. Zipoulos couldn't get there in time. Under seven and a half minutes to go. And DeVos inching closer to a championship. A tough tournament to win. They haven't won it since 2006. Canada hasn't won since 2007. Juicer stops that and hangs on. Senya, fast forward. Good, smart player. Played in North America, won the Hobie Baker Award. Colorado College back over in Switzerland now for three seasons. The fastest players in this tournament. What comes back? That was Stalls jumping up trying to get to it. Now does it? Dinamo look, do they look tired or just frustrated or a bit of both? Oh, they were certainly tired in the first period. I don't think fatigue is going to come into play here in the last seven minutes. But Davos is doing a great job frustrating. Look at right here with Ozilin. They're coming over five guys on the blue line. Five guys. Hank and pads. And that's another example, Paul. Great job of team defense. That puck is about to get down low. Back up the other way. Burglar shoots. Rebound in front. Oh, stretching out. It's... Loose momentarily, but Juicer stretched the big stretch across to cover that up. And now a posturing and pushing and shoving after the whistle.
under six and a half minutes to go. Ice and call on Dinamo Riga. He asked the question early on, is Davos able to frustrate Riga? Absolutely. That was just, that was a textbook piece of defense, neutral zone defense right there. Riga's looking to spring the forward. Number six, Ramble, playing in the middle. Did a perfect job of taking out of the play, lifting up his stick. The puck went all the way down for an icing. It's textbook zone coverage right there. Tadachuk going after it. Back. Plays it up towards the corner. That's Ramholt looking for it. Gets it down low there for Sikora. This is Sikora. Little display of stick handling, but doesn't amount to much. Back the other way comes Carsons in over the blue line. Tried to dish across there for Galvins, but broken up. Sikora plays it across the ice. Tadachuk. We'll just slow things down. Saucers it back across for Sikora. Okay, come on. Come on. Now Sikora and uh, Galvin's glaring at one another rather menacingly behind the play. Davos only one man in deep, four back, clogging up the middle. It can be very difficult for Dinamo to negotiate that. And there's an example. Beautifully done. Back up is Earl, flips that puck, it's tipped up over the glass and into the netting. The right call right there, Paul. You talk about four guys on the line, it's just it was extra discipline. It's not sort of attractive to watch it. all four guys are back. It's a lot more exciting to see the play go back up and down. But Davos doing a really nice job of the lead. You have to respect an offensive team when they can show you that kind of discipline defensively. Earl just clears the puck up into the corner. Sibulskis. Trying to come in there was Brendel. Pocket pick moved up ahead there quickly to Ankepans. The veteran drops it back. Sibulskis gets it across in front. And oh, that was a good chance for Bukarts that just disintegrated. DeVos on a change, and so Senyu just kind of ragging that puck and then fires it in. And a good job, allowed his guys a change to get fresh legs out. Nice job of ragging the puck right there by Senyu, number 13. Long Davos. pass up the middle, that doesn't connect. It's an icing call on Dinamo. And they haven't connected on a long pass, probably about for the last seven or eight minutes, because Davos is doing such a wonderful job of clogging up the zone. It makes it difficult. As a defenseman, you know that, especially when I played these checks and sweeps, they were so good defensively protecting leads against us. You look up, you see a guy sprinting towards the middle of the ice, and say around the red line or just over the red line, we've got four or five other colored shirts right there. And it's just a disheartening thing to be turning up the ice and realizing you have nothing to do with the puck. Stick on ice, okay? Stick on ice. Grossman up there towards the corner. That was the Ciarone leaping up. Another icing call on Dinamo. But here's the thing. It's is coming around the net. Looking for number 15, Carson's is really effective fast forward for, for this Riga team. But even if you connect with it, you've got two Davos players converging on him anyway. So he's not going to be able to do anything with it. You're better off making a, I think in this case, a control break and coming over the red line. Like three fast forwards rather than try this long stretch pass against a defense that's prepared to play against it. Puck just dished in there. Grossman flips it in. Steinman. Just over four minutes to go. Burglar playing it in. Users. Redlish. Here's it back. Long pass up ahead there for Maya. Drives to the net, gets right in there. The puck rolls through. Maya driving the net. And Zipoulos was up there as well. They've still got a bit of punch left. Yeah, so you're driving them, but good job by Rennie Bach, the defenseman here for Davos. Look at him. You hold them, you push them off, you get physical with them without taking a penalty. That's the key. Make sure your feet are always moving, allows the defenseman to get maintained position and bear the big bolt of it coming out and using his stick to corral the puck and then cover up with it.
Puck tipped towards the net there. Oh, almost snaking his way through his anchor pads, but didn't quite roll his way. Just locked it out there to the neutral zone. Galvins plays it up. Floated up there to the corner. Anchor pans after it. Stalls as well. Muscled his way around, and the puck just sliding off of his stick. Jumping up at all. Oh, Sakura, he was moving down the middle. If they got that puck to him, he was in on a penalty shot virtually. I mean, if that 360 backhand pass through the neutral zone from Marks connects to them, streaking yeah. through the neutral zone, yeah, he's probably in the low. Well, here's a two on two, another quick pass, making a three on two. The trailer is Brindle, shoots right on. That was stopped. Extra man jumping up there, Pavel Brindle. Luciana's trying to come in. He stopped. Ozelin's coming over, trying to get a handle on Gugisberg. It's the little dangle by Gugisberg, then he shoots in on goal. And Users will stop it and hang on. That's confidence right there from Gugisberg. You're feeling it when you're willing to pull a quick 360 in the offensive zone, pivot out. You're up by two. You're not even thinking about risk the thought of losing the puck right there. You're so confident with your skills, you don't mind pivoting. You can see him right here getting a couple slaps from his guys on the bench. Nice job. He's a gifted offensive player, Peter Gugis. Excuse me, Peter Gugisberg for Davos. Oh, and the guy who patented that uh, was number 99. Oh, he did it a few times? Just come up with that little dangle on the half boards, wait for coffee to steam up. Yeah. And then he patented a lot of things. The game misses Wayne Gretzky. How can it not? How can it not? Bloodmark. Long shot up to the corner. Active bounce off of the glass, but nobody there to get it. It in. You know what? I've, I've probably talked enough this week unless something big happens. What a atmosphere. What a crowd. Just enjoy it. Chops it in on goal. Eusers knocks that away. Under a minute to go. there of already thinking they had this one in the bag. You'll see it a little sloppy, not aggressive the way we've seen him here in the third period. Slow covering the points. The shot coming in. Nice tip in right there. Nice tip in. Timeout called here by the Riga coach Pekka Rottikelio. Excellent tip and you see that just on the side. Lucienes, that yeah. uh, Finnish import winger was an Atlanta pick I believe a few years back. That would be the farthest thing from his mind right now. He's oh, nice job of Lucene. He's positioning himself, but if you notice, that it was sort of at the, the point where the, the crowd was at its peak, cheering Davos onto this victory. The guy's got a little sluggish in their own zone, not aggressive, particularly covering the points. And Lucene is positioning himself perfectly just to the right of the goal and managing to take that puck giving Riga here life with 26 seconds to go in the third period. 
Riga called the timeout, by the way. What a building, though. Oh, my goodness. Just... We got caught up with that. was just tremendous. And ah, cheering the home team on, it was wonderful. Yeah, sit back and listen. About three minutes to go, and they, they got her going, cranked up. Consistently for three straight minutes. It's, it's really something special to hear. I think we're going to get it if Davos holds on to this victory again. Well, uh, no doubt, Users, the goaltender, looking over towards the bench. If they can get possession, which they have now, he looks over and he'll hot foot it to the bench. Extra attacker out there. And oh, an icing call. Icing and Paul standing still in the neutral zone right there. You've got to be patient. I know what Calvin's wanted to do. He wanted to get the puck up on the right hand side. Number eight, the veteran Ozilin was there, but you've got to be patient. That was stacking the neutral zone right there. Hold on to it, get the puck, clutch it in with speed. 18.8 seconds to go face off in the own zone. Certainly not what they wanted off of that face off in the center ice. And the roof is being raised here in Devils. Okay, skates, 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 One rush. Goalie goes to the bench. Stopped up at the line. Galvins. And offside, it's called, no, it's the final seconds. It's over. How's that, how was that not called? That, there should be four seconds left in the clock. That was an icing with at least four seconds left. Should give Riga one last opportunity here. Yeah, the goalies go, are the uh, referees over there to the timekeeper. Is that any, uh, Seconds on the clock. Four seconds. I was looking to benefit from the town scorekeeper right there, allowing the clock to wind down. Empty net. All comes down to this. Lucianus on the draw. Galvin's poised just back behind him. That's the play. And for the 15th time. The victors and the vanquished. The 15th Spengler Cup title for DeVos. The fifth under head coach Arno Del Cordo. Test to that. And we will just stick around here for the player of the game presentations. All right. Bit of a Canadian flavor here. It's Jamie Lundmark. And 
for DeVos, who do you think? Wouldn't be a stretch to say the goaltender, Ray Tobaro. You called it, Karnak. <laughs> I had my, my player of the game crystal ball, Paul. Been a pleasure. Glad you could join us. Love this tournament. If you enjoy it half as much as I do, you've had a good time. So long from DeVos. A reminder tonight, New Year's Eve, it's Canada against the U.S. World Junior Championship, 7.30 Eastern Time. Canada has won their group. They're into the semis. The USA, however, what a disappointing tournament for them. They can do no better than seventh, and so they will try to avoid relegation into the B pool when they play later in the week. As we welcome you back to our Spengler Cup control, the two best teams all week meeting in the final in Davos, Switzerland, as Davos looked to win a 15th Spengler Cup. And it was the home team that scored first. It's Gregory Schiaroni. Gets over the blue line and his shot beats Mattis Yusuf. And just like that, it's one nothing. And then they add to it on a power play. Peter Sikora had a great tournament. This is number five for him. Two nothing Davos. And then during a scramble in front, watch Robin Grossman. Puts his hand on the puck. Johnny Bear, the referee from Moncton, uh, New Brunswick, was there for the call. But what a great save by Barra, the keeper, as he followed him across. Actually stacked his pads. You don't see that very often. To the second, Riga makes a game of it. Edmonton's Jamie Lundmark beats Barra to make it 3-1. Then, late in the period, Riga will get one just under 30 seconds remaining. Nicholas Lucensis with a tip at the side of the net, 3-2. But Davis will hold on in the final seconds to win it. Make the final. Davos three. And Dinamo Riga two to claim their 15th Spengler Cup as uh, Davos, as we say, the most successful of teams in the Swiss League. They are the defending Swiss League champions, having won five of the last 10 years and now winning their first Spengler Cup since their last, which was against Team Canada back in 2006. There'll be a party tonight in Davos, you can bet, as they win the Spengler Cup. A reminder, you can see the gold medal game of the World Under-17 Hockey Challenge coming up Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Nine of the last first NHL picks have come and have played in this tournament. Here's the all-star team, Santos Ozlin, of course, Stanley Cup winner, and Robbie Earle, the former Maple Leafs, the Chicago native, had a wonderful tournament on loan from Davos. And as we leave you, there are other club hockey tournaments in the world, but there are none like the Spengler Cup, the oldest and most successful. In much the same way that there are other waterside auto races around the world, such as Long Beach in Toronto, the original is Monaco. And just like Monaco, location has a lot to do with Spengler success. The Swiss talk about the magic of the mountain. Davos is a living postcard, so it's easy to understand why there is only one Spengler Cup. So the win by Davos snaps the string of three consecutive wins by either Russian or KHL teams. Canada's last win in 2007 as the Canadians bow out early at this year's event in the quarterfinals. It's always an enjoyable event, the Spengler Cup. And now on behalf of Paul Romanuk, Doug Honiger and our crew in Davos, and on behalf of our entire crew here at our Spengler Cup Control, thank you for joining us. Happy New Year, everybody. Stay well. The Spengler Cup is here on Canada Sports Leader, TSN.